Hello and welcome to an inkdependence.com video review. This one's not going to be super brief. It'll be mildly brief, uh, but it'll probably be a little longer than usual because I'm doing a pen. And uh, here's a pen, or here's actually a, a hint as to that pen. You've seen one of these before? Yeah, you've definitely seen these around the interwebs. It is the Montegrappa Mule. This is built on the Fortuna ba body. I'm not going to show it to you just yet. Here is, voila, a picture of it all uh, shiny and stuff. Uh, the one that I have to show you is not at all shiny. It is nicely tarnished. So if you want to see what it looks like tarnished, you know, keep watching. Uh, this is the box that it comes in. One of several boxes, actually. Yeah, let's move this up a skosh. That is... There we go. Now we've got all kinds of... Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, this is the, uh, the box that it comes in, which is a pretty nondescript box. Take off the sleeve. Throw that over there. You have another box, which is more descript. It has uh, these uh, little diamonds on it, which I see on the, uh, the Kenro website. Uh, by the way, this is sent out by Ryan at Kenro for me to review. I'm going to hate to send it back. That's a little preview of uh, what I think about it. I like it. Um, this is called the Montegrappa Filigree on the website. It's the same pattern that is on the nib. So we'll take this off. And inside there is another, uh, another box, of course. A couple of boxes. This is a little thing that says, hey, by the way, this is made out of solid copper, and so it will tarnish. Uh, anyway, that's that. Uh, this is one of those cool boxes where you can put down the flap and you can take the box out more easily. I kind of love that. If you're going to have as many boxes as this thing does, it better be uh, easy to take out. Uh, inside is a leathery box. You can sort of see and maybe even hear that. Uh, it has a nice little plaque on the top that says Montegrappa Italia. Inside, you will find the classic little pillow type thing. This came with a polishing cloth. It actually came with a pair of poly... Actually, this let go just the other... You know, Today, while a few minutes ago, while I was making another video, uh, this let go. So, yeah, that's too bad, but what are you going to do? Not like anybody really cares about this thing. Uh, it has a little pillow thing. Uh, then it has a bunch of stuff. We have the, uh, the makings for the Montegrappa Mule. This is the bag that... Sh Craggles! Shh! This is the bag that the, uh, the pin came in. Sort of protect it from air. Uh, this is... Oh, this is what the yellow one came in. It came with a blue one. I don't know what color you'll get with yours. I sort of suspect that one of these was meant to come with the uh, cup because the cup is also copper and might need polishing. It came with a couple of cartridges, which I didn't use. I just used the converter that it was with. Although I now I see these are very fancy cartridges. They have Marta Grappa written on them. Um, nice little booklet of information if you want information about the company and that kind of stuff. So let's uh, pack all this stuff back in here quickly. And... Uh, voila. This thing used to be like glued in again. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. All right, so that's enough box talk. Uh, there's a lot of boxes that come with this pen. It is well boxed. This is the pen. So um, you'll have seen briefly uh, a moment ago a picture of the, uh, the shiny version. You'll probably also have seen the shiny version around on the interwebs because people are really fond of showing this off. That's because it's a darn nice looking pen. Uh, in fact, when I was at the Atlanta Pen Show, I was uh, helping out with the Andersons. Uh, and I kept showing people this pen. I'm like, oh, you want to see the trial to mule? And so people did. Uh, but this is a pen that does definitely grab attention, I think. Uh, the shiny version, when it's all mirror shiny, which you can actually see a little bit of right in here. If I can get to focus on that. Yeah, there we go. See a little bit of the mirror finish right in there. Um, but uh, that's just because it's protected by the clip. The rest of this has not been cleaned at all. So this is about a month worth of tarnish. Uh, my hands are, I think, a little bit uh, prone to making things tarnish more quickly, so perhaps yours will go more slowly. You never know. Uh, but anyway, this is about a month. So you see it's taken on sort of a nice mottled color, but it's still smooth as all get out. It's very, uh, very cool and smooth, I think. It has a nice uh, 1912 up on the top. The clip is, um, the clip and the cap band and also the section, I believe, are all brushed silver plate. Um, so... Uh, this, but uh, I'm not sure, it's, it's probably steel or something underneath the silver plate. Uh, this is a very stiff clip. It doesn't move much at all. Uh, it's going to hold it securely. And this little round uh, ball right here, this little roller, see if I can pick it up enough to roll the ball. There you go. Uh, it works very well. And actually, this is uh, super easy to clip on jeans because of that rolly ball. Uh, and this is a very, very much a clip on your jeans sort of pen. Uh, I, <laughs> I ran into Brian from Ken Row at the Atlanta show, and he had his clipped on his pants. And uh, mine was clipped on my jeans. And, uh, you know, we had a good chat about clipping these on jeans. There's uh, Montegrappa there. And that's it as far as branding. I thought 1912, but that's not super ostentatious. I think it's kind of ostentatious. I think it's kind of nice. On the other end, nothing. Just rounded off copper. Um, 
This is a, a fairly weighty pen because it's uh, made entirely of copper and then there's like, I guess probably stainless under there and then silver plate. Uh, but, um, you know, it's a pretty robust pen. So if you have small hands, my wife's complaint mostly about this pen is that it's too heavy for her to use when posted. Uh, she really likes to post the, her pens because she doesn't want to lose the cap. Uh, this does post well and you can write with it posted. I wouldn't do that for super long though because that cap is fairly heavy. It's a uh, 20 gram cap, so quite a bit uh, of, of weight there. So um, the, uh, the threads on this are pretty big and flat. I think they call those Acme threads, although they don't quote me on that. I'm just, I'm pretty sure that's what that's called. Uh, also, my wife tends to hold a pen like this, I guess. She was showing me the other night because she said that the, the threads kind of hurt her fingers. And I was shocked because I hold a pen like this. I hold it really close to the, the end of the section. And so my fingers are nowhere near that those threads. But hers, I think she puts this there and goes like this. And so she's right on the threads and that's, um, she doesn't like it because they're kind of hard. And they are metal, so they are pretty stiff. Uh, the, uh, the section, I believe, is also this brushed silver stuff. And you can actually see, like, the brushing goes this way. But I've got this set of, I don't know what the deal is, but like a tool mark or something around the, the edge of the section here. Uh, kind of here it, where my finger is. Maybe you can see a bit of it on the camera. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's there. And I didn't see that until the grips, the section started to tarnish a little bit. That's what cued me in to look and see what this was made out of. Because I just assumed it was brushed stainless, but it's brushed silver plate. And I think it just has tarnished enough where you can see those marks. And you couldn't before. Uh, it did have these sort of streaks in it when I got it, which looked a little bit odd when it was a mirror bright copper and then like the streaky bits here. But as it is tarnished, I think it actually looks great. Um, the inside of the cap has a nice uh, plastic um, uh, liner, inner cap type thing there. And I haven't had any problems with this pen drying out, except for probably right now it's going to be dried out because I'm just waving it. There we go. It starts out pretty quickly. I'm just waving it around with the nib open talking about it. Uh, the nib is a fairly large nib. Uh, number six, it looks like to me, although I, uh, I don't have any official word on that. You can see that same Mondegraff of filigree here that you do on the box. All right, same sort of thing, just very small. Uh, Mondegraffa in the middle in a clear space. And then down here, uh, you might be able to see just a hint of it, the M for medium. This is a medium nib, and it's a pretty true medium, I think. Uh, when I first got the pen, I thought that it was a little bit... Uh, a little bit dry because it was and a little, maybe the nib ran really small uh, but I think it was just that I needed to rinse it out and uh, re-ink it and it works just fine after that it's a good medium and it's a real nice uh, real nice flow on this uh, I actually have it inked up with this um, this odd ink perhaps that you will have heard of called Tekker this is a custom ink manufacturer uh, so it's got this Tekker blue in there and uh, it works great I really like it quite a bit we'll do a little bit of writing here in a bit um, I wanted to uh, to compare it to some pens, uh, so actually this pen tray is totally full of pens. Let's, uh, let's try and put this in the middle, why not? So I wanted to compare it to some links and stuff. There we go, that's pretty well centered. So there it is, there's the mule, and uh, it's next to a whole bunch of things including this big core. We'll take this out of here and put in, uh, throw in some Omas, so some, some other Italian class next to it. And uh, this is a tactile turn gist, which I just got. Preppy? Um, okay, that's fine. There. So there, there it is next to a whole bunch of other things. So it's a pretty average length for a pen, really. Uh, it's a, a little bit shorter than this uh, Custom 74. It's a little shorter than this Omos next to it. A little bit longer than this Delta Unica that's in there. Uh, but it's right about the same length, it looks like, as the Lamy. So uh, there you go. Eh, lame, yeah, just about the same. It's a little bit wider here at the, the this bit uh, gets a little bit bulbous around the top. Uh, this is the Fortuna line is what this comes out of. And you can get a lot of different Fortunas, a lot of different finishes. Um, here's an, a pen that I wanted to compare it to, though, because it's another heavy metal pen. And that is the Kara's Customs uh, Fountain K. Let's kind of clear some space around it so we can isolate these two. Uh, it's the Fountain K. This is the version one of this pen. And uh, it's quite a bit smaller, actually, it appears, uh, than the Fortuna, or rather the, uh, the Mule. Uh, the section's about the same, or rather the, uh, the cap comes off about the same place, but then there's more cap here. So um, I expected these to be more or less similar in weight, but they are definitely not. The, uh, just the capped, you know, pins, both of them. Uh, the Fountain K, which is this one right here, which is full on brass. Uh, this is full copper. You can actually see some copper on the inside. I didn't show you inside the barrel because you wouldn't be able to see anyway. Uh, but it is copper in there. Uh, this is uh, far heavier. So the Fountain K is about 77 grams capped, 
just shy, but about 77 grams. This one is 53 grams, just shy a little bit, but you know, so uh, like 25 grams difference, which is a fair amount really. So and you can definitely feel the difference in the heft of these two pens. So this one, much heavier. Uh, this I think is not super heavy to write with, and actually my wife even doesn't mind writing with it uncapped as far as weight. Uh, but she uh, you know, doesn't like the, the, the weight when you post it. When you post it, it's a bit back heavy, I think. And I don't write with it posted either, really. Although it does post nicely, so you can. Let's go ahead and open it up and show you what's on the inside. So there you go. Let's see if I can see some copper in there. No, you're not going to be able to see it. But trust me, I can. Yeah, maybe you can see a little bit of glint there. Uh, it comes with a very nice converter. It's a good converter as far as converters go. Um, there you go. All right. So that is what this guy looks like. So let's move. Oh, well, let's see. Here's another couple of things. It's about, I don't know, if I had to say, I'd say it's roughly similar to an intensity, actually. I haven't weighed the intensity. I have no idea what it weighs, but uh, roughly similar, I would say. Anyway, uh, let's get this out of the way. Move this guy. Let's get something to write on. There we go. Fresh, fresh Rhodia pad. Oh, well. do a little bit of a writing sample. Um, so, uh, pros. Actually, that wrote pretty well out of the box with, uh, you know, having been waved around for 10 minutes without being capped, really. Uh, pros. Uh, looks cool. And it really does have a cool look to it. In fact, this is a pen that is not going to fly under the radar. I have been asked about this pen every time I've had it in my pocket or pulled it out. Um, copper is awesome. All right, great instead. Um, and the weight is good. Uh, I've had no problems with this nib, actually. It's got a really smooth nib. It's uh, has had no problems writing. No, uh, no skipping, none of that. A little bit of a hard start right there when I started to write prose. Uh, That's just because I've been waiting around uncapped for quite a while. Now, this is a steel nib. Uh, steel. Uh, and that might put some people off at this price point because it is a fairly expensive pen. It is a, I mean, it's not that expensive for a Monte Grappa. It is, um, uh, up there in, in price though. Like there are a lot of pens that I even have. I really don't even have much sitting around here that's even comparable. I mean, this Omos is pretty comparable. Um, you can get an Omos for, I don't know, I mean, it's more expensive than this one, but, uh, you know, not hugely more. It's in the same ballpark. Uh, this, uh, the Pro Gear is around the same. It's a little bit less. I don't really have anything at this mark. This pin, by the way, or the, uh, the Misrip is about uh, three, uh, the Misrip is 375. So that's pretty darn expensive. And it comes with a steel nib right there is where I wrote that. And uh, that puts some people off. Now, here's the thing. I am not a gold purist or anything like that. I don't think that an expensive pen has to have a gold nib. Um, and this one doesn't. But it has a great steel nib. This is one of, my, one of my favorite steel nibs. The only one that I like maybe better is on my Levenger Select. That one has a fantastic steel nib. And also the Faber-Castells are good. But this one uh, is very good. Um, so cons, kind of heavy. Kind of expensive. Uh, we can put in the steel nib. And uh, what else? Oh, it smells like copper. This is that's something I hadn't really noticed because I haven't sniffed it. Uh, my wife was like, "Oh, it smells like pennies," and it does. It smells like a handful of pennies. Uh, so if you have, if you are sens sensitive to that smell, you are not gonna love it. Um, that's the that's that thing. Uh, so, I mean, the biggest problem, I think, for it is really that it's heavy. If you love the aesthetic of it, if you like the story behind the Monte Grappa, uh, like the grappa that, uh, that's uh, distilled in, like, uh, copper pipes, and they've got this whole drink that they built around it, and, like, some of that stuff, then, and you like the way that it feels in your hand, you're really going to like this pen. And it's a darn nice pen. Uh, it's very classy. It's also kind of exciting. It's kind of rugged. Uh, and you add your own history to it as you let it patina with your hands. Now, you can use those cloths to, like, clean the patina off. I don't know why anybody would do that, frankly, and I haven't. I was going to do it just for this, uh, uh, this video because I'm going to have to send it back anyway. And, well, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's see. 
I will, I will clean the bottom of it. We'll see how it works. <laughs> this hasn't been cleaned at all before. So let's see. You see, it's got a pretty serious uh, tarnish there. The patina, let's give it a little bit of rub. And, uh, well, yeah, it actually is kind of brighter. Got rid of that pretty quickly, actually. Oh, there it is. There's the, the, the tarnish. A little bit more. I don't mind just rubbing the end off here. Yeah, it's pretty good. This cloth actually works much better than I thought it was going to. Uh, but anyway, I don't, I don't really want to clean it. I want it to have patina. I want it to have that like a sort of personal touch because none of these are going to look the same. Um, as I mentioned on the blog post, when I took this out of the, the box, I had, uh, I had seen some little uh, like blemishes in it, and I'll put them right here-ish. Uh, and uh, I thought maybe they were like defects in the copper or something. I was uh, thinking they were maybe tool marks. Uh, but you can't see them now. They're totally gone. And you can tell that this cap is totally smooth. Uh, and so I think they might have just been a little bit of uh, patina developing even in the bag. So as soon as I took it out, maybe even a little bit before I took it out, it was uh, starting to have a patina on it. But uh, this is a really good pen. It's a really good nib. Uh, you're just going to have to decide whether or not the price is good for you. Uh, you can generally find it on the street for about 300 uh, various stores have it for that. The miserable, like I said, is three seventy-five. So that's that's rare air up there. That's uh, that's expensive stuff. So look, that's kind of up to you. And I didn't pay for this pen, so I can't tell you whether I would or not. Um, so there you go. Um, this is uh, anyway. This is uh, this has been Ink Dependence. I am Mike. That's me. I cannot write standing up, and that's what I'm having to do. I'm writing around a tripod. I don't know how people like uh, Stephen Brown and uh, uh, Matt. From pen habit do it but i'm not any good at writing with a, around a camera but uh anyway i'm mike this is ink dependence this has been the montegrappa mule it's the fortuna body if you like the way this pen looks and you think that maybe you'd be cool with like a blue body with a i think there's a blue and rose gold and like a blue and silver uh there's a, a white one that's pretty rad i think there's coming out with, they're coming out with more colors of this pen uh, and you can get fortunas at all kinds of price ranges i mean there's one that's like just skulls on skulls on skulls so it doesn't matter what you're into. There's a Fortuna for you, probably. Um, so, you know, check that pen out. It's got a good nib. I really like it. Even though it's steel, try to overlook the steeliness of the nib and, uh, you know, judge the pen on its performance. And its performance is darn good. So there you go. This is the uh, monograph of Mule. Uh, I am Mike. This is Ink Dependence. And that is all. Uh, if you uh, are interested in helping to support this blog, not everybody sends me out pens. In fact, very rarely do I get pens sent out. And so most of this stuff I have to pay for on my own. Uh, so if you would like to help support the blog, then please do so over at uh, www.patreon.com slash inkdependence. And that will be a place where you can uh, make a recurring monthly donation for anywhere between like a dollar and a million dollars. If you have an extra million dollars sitting around, I will take it off your hands for you. I got no problem with that. Uh, but, uh, you know, please do uh, help support the blog if you want to. If you don't, that's cool too. We're all going to be pals. So uh, thank you very much to my patrons. And uh, peace out. I'll see y'all later.